Okay, we're back here at our how unit we set a couple months ago at the trailer here, and the power is now on, so we can start it up. So the first thing I want to check is, well, first of all, you got dirt all over everything, so it's kind of nasty. Pisses me off a little bit. That's okay. Uh, the pressure's still on it. I let a little bit of it off. I think we were at 225-ish, and I let some off, so we're at 220, 218 now. So I know our pressure held this whole time, which is good. It's going to give us a nice good vacuum, hopefully. So I'm going to take this off, let the nitrogen off, we'll hook up the vacuum pump and get it going. i got all our stuff set up. i got the half-inch hoses hooked up to either side, valve core removers. Got a little bit different vacuum gauge on there this time. Uh, the S-Mans were cutting it, so they got fired. And uh, we got it shut off. We're about to turn it on and get to it. And we got those open. Tell you what, it's been about a minute. I think I figured out the problem. All right, we had our hoses and I had everything set up before and nothing was happening. Nothing was pulling down. But what I thought about is the S-Man being a vacuum gauge, first, I have two things wrong with that. The hoses going to the S-Man aren't vacuum rated. And secondly, that sensor is always exposed to junk all the time. Uh, it would need to be cleaned profusely every time I used it and I think it was muddy in the waters as far as the reading because now we have 220 so going up and down 220 microns and it's only been on for two two and a half minutes so I'm happy with that I'm going to religiously clean this one uh, but I think the S-Man just is not built to take the beating of pulling those deep vacuums and being in regular use gauges as well. So hopefully we got it figured out and uh, we're already into the deep vacuum. So we'll let it run for a little while while I check things out then we'll start her up. All right we've drop tested it for about 10 minutes and at 375 we are good to go. Uh, you can drop test it for longer than that. Uh, the American Standard Units and uh, Fritz and John will probably know this one. Uh, I think they asked to bring it down to 350 and hold it for a minute. So we we'll definitely have surpassed that mark. And we're holding steady at 375, so we're about to release the valves, take this uh, stuff off, and hook up the gauges. All right, the next step after our vacuum is I take the Schraders and put them back in and releasing charge here. Nice and easy. We have a TXV in there. We don't want to put it through too much here with a lot of refrigerant coming in there all at once. Uh, liquid side first, or high side first, then low side. And it's slowly going in there. There we are. And, of course, I clean my hoses before I switch from R22 to R410A. All right, we've been running for just a few minutes. I uh, see our sub cooling still a little low. It's 3.5. It's been bouncing around. We'll let it go for about 10 more minutes. Uh, super heat right down there where we want it. There's a TXV on the indoor coil. It's actually the first trailer I've done with a TXV on the coil. I know that some of them do have TXVs, but not for me yet. So this is the first one of those. Uh, another interesting fact. Uh, we have our breaker up there. And when I opened the panel door because it kept tripping off, the breaker fell out the front of the door. It's kind of a funny thing. That hasn't happened yet. I had to clean up some of that stuff that was down there. It just annoys the crap out of me. Well, our target superheat was 13. And we went up to 13.5 down to 11.2. It's going kind of back and forth. So we're doing pretty good. You see the TXV is adjusting, changing the superheat. So superheat's bound to be around five, five to eight degrees. So I'm pretty happy with that right there. It's on the lower end of the spectrum, but uh, as long as it doesn't drop down too much farther, I'll be happy. Uh, so we're pretty squared away. I'll let it run for a little bit longer, but we're probably uh, not going to alter anything. Uh, she looks pretty good, and she's getting 20 degrees inside, which is pretty good. A couple guys had asked me about where you put your clamps for the S-Man for measuring superheat and subcooling. So where I put mine is for subcooling, you're measuring the subcooled liquid heading out of the condenser, right here. So once it leaves the condenser, the 3 8 line typically with residential, uh, you put it anywhere on this line going back toward the evaporator, usually at the condenser, that's where your gauges are at, obviously. 
So I put mine here, but you can put it anywhere on this line that you can find a good connection. The electrical was in the way here, so that's why I went on this side. For superheat, you're getting a measure of superheated gas heading back to the compressor. So right here at the service valve is just fine. Usually you can slide the insulation back and put your clamp right there. That's how I get my measurement. So we're looking at 11.1 and 3 right now. So she's cooling very well. I'm going to let her uh, go for a little while, then I'm going to call it a day. Okay, we're all done here, and I got the furnace open, and let me tell you, or show you, what is very frustrating. Let's go turn on the blower. Now, I mean, you know, we've checked the whole thing, and it's good to go, right? Sounds good so far. Good sound of blower. Nice and healthy. Probably last for a thousand years. Come on. Uh oh. What's that? Hear that? Doesn't sound good down there. pushing the slow down button. It's funny. It started off on a high and now it's on medium low. I got a strong feeling that in a couple minutes it's going to be on stop. And oh, that is the sound of a very bad blower. So we are going to have to change that out because the furnace is existing, but the end coil and the unit are new. She's dead. Dead the door now. I get to move my lines out of the way, which I so cleverly put in the way. Nope. And nothing. The perfect end to a perfect day.